Hello friends and welcome to the Storyteller's Guide on Gilding Light, where we take adventure storytelling to the next level. Imagination. One of the great things about storytelling is being able to imagine strange worlds where physics is a bit different than what we experience every day. Spirits, golems, flying elemental infused airships all get to exist in our stories. Today we're going to push the envelope with adventure creation inspired by Idle Champions, the second great Modron march from earlier this year. It introduced Kilek Ad Kolar, the Aarakocra Bard and Cleric, and brought back Evelyn Marthane, human paladin of Lathander. If you miss them, don't worry, you can unlock them in Idle Champions Time Gates. I'm Satine Phoenix, your story guide for today's Storyteller's Guide episode called Let's Get Weird. In today's episode, we are stepping beyond usual fantasy into the plains. Our guest's task is to create an adventure inspired by Modron. There are clockwork people from Mechanus whose zealotry is to law and order over all else. Mechanus itself is a cluster of giant countryside gears where the inhabitants live on either side of these gears. Every 17 years, the Modrons mobilize on a tour through the cosmos. Reality and physics are shifted here. We know there aren't magic flying gears with communities living on them, but in this plane, they exist, and we fight them, and hopefully we win. Remember this when playing in places that are askew. A thing might not make sense to the characters at first, but it better make sense to the plane it exists in. When the world believes in its own bizarreness, so too will your players. You don't have to overthink the physics of your world, but there should be a reason for everything, and it should be explainable in a couple of sentences. How can we dive into bending reality without making the players feel like they're playing a completely different game than what they signed up for? Establish environmental perspective. I encourage storytellers to start with sharing something familiar to the realm the party begins on. Establish the normal world in efficient detail, so when you begin explaining that a creature can, I don't know, you walk up a wall to sit on a couch on a ceiling and eat popcorn that drops up to the floor, well, the group gets the intended feeling you're trying to project. Even before you get to this step, you want to figure out what the intended emotional outcomes are from bending reality. Are you trying to scare them? Or to awe them? To make things complicated or more playful? Once you figure out how the intended whole party emotional reaction to this world should be, the next step is to make a list about how this other reality works and sculpt it to amplify your reaction goals. Is it 30% more complex? 60%? 90% more complex than the world they come from? Write it down. Log it into your World Anvil campaign. Being able to sift through your campaign notes easily makes improvising way easier and quicker. Even though I encourage off-the-cuff improv games, it's harder to come up with consistent world dynamics on the fly. So, I encourage you to be prepared. Once you know your world, you'll easily be able to add to it in the moment. With this new world information, you might get that super excited Game Master feeling and want to monologue all of the cool things you've come up with. Don't do it, if you can help it. Dose this information to your players slowly reveal this world to them so they get used to it and can remember the small details equaling up to the larger overall vision of your plane. Start with items like the color of the sky, the slight differences in the flora and fauna, then continue and add greater details with larger differences like, I don't know, the way schools of fish float through the streets, catching bugs that are attracted to the light posts. By slowly, I mean use your best judgment. The players should have a good idea what they're getting themselves into by the end of the first half hour. Maybe it only takes 10 minutes, and then dose reveals through the entire day's adventure. Use time for your reveals within an encounter, or use a character's position on the terrain, encouraging the group to look at things from physically different perspectives. Standing on a pedestal in the middle of a room is going to offer a different perspective than at the base of stairs in front of a door. You can reveal the differences to different players, and when they all discover something new, they've experienced the joined creation of this place. 
The moment you start moving parts of the plane around, you have to keep consistent with it. Make sure you're prepared for when the players want to get weird with you. Didn't you say the insect traffic went up the north wall every morning at 8am? I want to blend in and join in walking up the north wall. That is not what your players sound like, but just being silly. Tabletop games are a cooperative experience and you need your players to consent to the creativity. Besides, it's more fun this way. Make it more weird. Sometimes a surreal adventure isn't just in the setting. We can bring the weird into our world and take our normal adventure and flip it on its head. Some important things to note with your players when they want to get a little wacky in the game. Be okay with oddball ideas. Allow the players to explore and add to the weird. Cooperate with the players for an extra playful adventure. Let's go back to our first episode dragon friend Largo. Largo guards his Pearl of Power. What if the Pearl of Power changes gravity when you're within 40 feet of it? What if Largo is bored and wanted to play games that he was really good at with you and the Pearl is the prize? Think about the kind of things that would change this adventure into a weird and fun one. The floating treasure within 40 feet of the Pearl or nets holding the treasure down. Perhaps Largo is really excitable and is really sweet about wanting to play with you and doesn't want you to win doesn't want you to leave either. How fun would that be to roleplay? Well, we've got a couple of amazing guests on today's show that will be helping us think outside the box and into the weird. After this quick video, we'll be back with our guests and begin our quest here on the Storyteller's Guide. Hi, I'm Benwin Bronzebottom, celebrity dwarf and video game enthusiast, and this is my sidekick, Crowy. Hello. We're here to tell you about Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, a Dungeons & Dragons-based strategy management game from Codename Entertainment. They're Canadian, so you know it's good. Let's talk about the game. Did you ever play Cookie Clicker? Of course not. This game is a management game like that, but with far more emphasis on strategy. And with a flavoring of D&D's lore and legendary heroes, you can unlock your favorite champions like Farida from Aaron M. Evans' Brimstone Angels Saga, Minsk and Boo from Baldur's Gate, and the fourth and final member of Acquisitions Incorporated the C-Team, Amy Falcone's Walnut Dongrass. The K is silent. Create the best adventuring party possible based on the formation options, your character's ability, and the obstacles and enemies you face. Or you just randomly click on things like I do and hope for the best. You can click on enemies to assist your champions, or you can set them up and walk away and let them do their thing. It's entirely up to you. I'm playing on the toilet right now. Why wouldn't you be? Idle Champions is available on all your favorite gaming platforms, including tablets, for the low, low price of free. So download it now. End with joke. You're not supposed to read it that. It says end with joke. No, we're supposed to come up with a joke to go with oh. where it says end with joke. I don't know. End with joke is pretty funny. Wait, on three. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. End, end with, with joke. joke. <laughs> I think it's funny. It's very funny. <laughs> One of the biggest problems that storytellers face while in session is that when you're searching through your notes and books, you're breaking the flow of the game. World Anvil allows you to manage your lore, the stat blocks of your PCs, NPCs and monsters, your music, handouts, and so much more from a single screen. Fill your maps with lore and bring your worlds to life by connecting locations, NPCs, races, and monsters to the lands of your world with interactive maps. Track the history of your world, the adventures of your party, and all your major NPCs with timelines. World Anvil is not just for D&D 5e. It supports any other game you want, since you can build stat blocks in any system you're running and play your campaign in it, as every proper homebrew tool should aim to do. Oh. And you can make your own system too. Create an account now at worldanvil.com and join the World Builders Guild. Use the code STORYTELLER for a whopping up to 30% off Master and Grandmaster memberships. That's worldanvil.com. Hey guys, welcome back. I am very, very, very excited to welcome two guests to our show. We have Michelle Wynn Bradley, Betty on Rat Queens, RPG show on Hyper RPG. And also KG Tang, voiceover actor, the voice of Detective Pikachu in the game Detective Pikachu, <laughs> and also Dungeon Master of Dark and Dicey. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank I really you. Yeah, excited yeah. to be here. Um, I have known, I know you guys pretty good, but why don't we share with everybody else how long you've been DMing and what kind of games you guys usually run? 
so I just started DMing and um, since I'm new, I've really been doing like the kind of cookie cutter stuff just to learn like how the flow goes, what things I should be thinking about um, and started telling. I played a ton though, like I've been playing for about six or seven years, I want to say, um, in really long running campaigns. So it's nice to kind of be behind the curtain and uh, make fun adventures. And I, I do like kind of playing with I'm still like in medieval land because I, I like following the guides and like the stories, but I kind of throw, I'll throw like characters based on popular culture people or just like, like I'm really into like Sailor Moon stuff, so I'll just throw in like some magical girl stuff once in a while. <laughs> good taste, good taste. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, I've been playing uh, tabletop D&D stuff for, for since I was like in late middle school and, and after. So uh, I, I've run the gamut of like, you know, OG Dungeons and Dragons, Vampire the Masquerade, Call of Cthulhu, D20 Modern, like uh, just a, a bunch of stuff. Um, and I, I've DM'd since I think uh, I started halfway through high school and just been doing it ever since. For a long time. Oh, I'm an ancient man. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. I have two more questions for you, my yeah. friends. What do you think about, since the theme is weird, what do you think about when you think of a surreal or weird adventure? I guess things that don't kind of happen logically or there's always like a twist. I was evil the whole time. I don't know, that's almost normal now though, I feel like, in modern storytelling. Yeah, well, I, it's, I, the thing I love about like, um, D and D in any sort of like a tabletop role playing game is how freeform it is. So when you when you when you want a story to be surreal or weird, right? You can you can literally do anything, right? You can, you can you can set a medieval setting in a modern setting. You could you could you can um, turn character archetypes on their heads. It's it's just whatever. It, and it, of course, it depends what the people you're playing with. Whatever mm -hmm. your guys's either sense of humor or yeah. like you know kind of like isms are, you can incorporate into your game and make it that kind of weird like surreal thing. Yeah, absolutely. I think. Um, um, if the weirdness could come from what the characters themselves are doing. Maybe they have a real about them that they don't know that you've been thinking of, yeah. or it can come from the story itself, and come from the atmosphere, literally anywhere. Um, I tend to do just like a tone of like character voices and um, a lot of like, it was you, you were evil the whole time, you were the bad guy. <laughs> or, or if your player has a favorite K pop band, maybe they make an appearance under a different yeah. name in the story. <laughs> yeah, I've had games where there's just all of a sudden like Dojinshi comes in. And ah! <laughs> Oh, you, go no. to, you go to the library and like, are these, are these yours? Uh, I like that kind of stuff, just kind of cross-pollinating between the fandoms. Straight up doujinshi in d, &D. <laughs> So that is my next question. What are the things that you guys do in your game specifically? Is there like a memorable one that really stands out to you that you have done? Well, I, uh, for, I, I play D&D a little differently than a lot of people because I'm... You know, I'm, I, I, I work full time now. I don't have too much time to sit down at a table with friends. So when we get together, it's for usually shorter bursts of uh, entertainment, right? Uh, so uh, we have a lot of, um, we have a lot of weird stuff our, our tables do. Like um, we, we, we either uh, do like really, really kind of silly, like ev really mundane everyday things, but in the D&D &D world that makes it hilarious, yeah. right? Um, like for example, what if you were uh, part of a rent-a-cultist company? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Or, or you know, if you have a couple hours, why not do a one-shot that's so over the top, like Gurren Lagann style, like, you know, break through space and infinity, yeah. you know? You know, so it's just, we, I, at, at my age range, we, we tried to get as much out of our two to three hours as possible before we go off and don't see each other for like four months, you know? So you make it extra. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I feel like we do almost the similar things. Everyone's like really in Game of Thrones right now, like once in a while, we'll just like pull in some dumb little thing and then there was a character that's exactly like Jorah and <laughs> yeah so like doing stuff like that it kind of makes it more interesting for I think people but I guess in terms of weird I think um especially on Rat Queens we do this a lot and I don't DM that much just a player in it but um on Rat Queens we do a lot of a lot of the comedy comes from just picking apart the, the medieval world and like so why is it like this why are you lord of the spiders like do you who gave you that title like if you had you <laughs> yeah. own lands are you landed gentry like was your father like Lord, Lord Sir Spider. So I think a lot of the weird stuff we do is like, we hear, we hear the, what's supposed to be happening, and then we just kind of pick around it and don't do the like a lot of it. We don't do the, the main thing. We do you, the, the backstory thing. Have, have you ever <laughs> had that moment with with your players where you really kind of like ab, uh, absorb how much re, like murder goes into your it goes into their everyday yeah. life? It's like we have killed a lot of people. What is yeah. wrong with us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, like the short time I've. I've been DMing, there is, um, I noticed there's the people play differently. Some people mm. are there to, to hack and slash, some people are there to like improv, improvise and tell stories. 
Um, but I think the funniest part is when you, is it Red Dead, Red, Dead, Red, Dead, Red Dead Redemption? Redemption? Like when you kill people, like you get notoriety. So I think bringing that into the story, yeah. like, hey, you're a legit murderer. You're the bad guy. <laughs> you did this. <laughs> it's kind Speaking of Speaking of murder, oh. are you ready to create adventure? Yes. Sure. I think so. Okay. The weird. Here's the elements that we're going to start. We've got a very short amount of time to do a whole lot. <laughs> the theme is weird. Creatures that are inspired by Modrons and the Modron March. Those are the clockwork creatures, so it doesn't have to be them, but um, create a creature that is just like what? Um, level six characters, three major differences of this realm that you're going to be bringing your adventures into that are different than a normal D&D game. And then we'll say three acts. Okay. Yeah. I, well, that's, <laughs> I, 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 I got an idea to pitch you. Um, if we're starting. Ready, right. <laughs> okay, so, so, do you mind if I... Oh, please do. All right, so the Modrons, are, you know, the, the, they're these clockwork folks, and, you know, they, they, what was it, every 17 years, right, they go out and go on this journey, and they spread across the multiverse and come back. Um, so, recently, uh, Magic the Gathering has officially been added to the D&D lore. Yeah, Due does. to the Ravnica yeah. book, right? So, what is Magic the Gathering all about? Planeswalk. Right? Yeah. And that means we are now allowed to have any character in our D&D games possess a Planeswalker spark. Why not yeah. one of these Modrons, right? What if we have a game where the characters uh, encounter a, this, this, this Modron creature, it doesn't even have to be Modron, right? This Planeswalker, right? Who maybe has experienced almost all there is to experience in the multiverse. Maybe this character, this planeswalker, only has a few more weird bucket list items on his <laughs> list to take care of, right? Yeah. Maybe the maybe the character like, like the Doctor Who, the Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like jaded, like oh man, I've done so much, but I'm looking for the perfect party members to come with me to do these last three things. <laughs> a companion. And, oh no, exactly. it's already been written. What are we exactly. doing? <laughs> and they just happen to walk into the bar that day, you know? Yeah, okay. yeah. So 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 you know we can we can we can embrace the whole going on a journey anything and and for like and and since the the, the theme is weird mm -hmm. why not take them because you know you know, expect you'd expect a plane a, like a plane's walking deep you need to take you to like a plane of air plane of water right what if this what if this planeswalker and on his bu bucket list it's like i really want a bee want to be the manager to a wrestler who wrestles a dragon for Ooh. like a, the wrestling championship <laughs> of like 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 really right so, so he, silly. I love yeah it. exactly so 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 it, it it takes it out of the constraints of the actual D, &D universe since he's a planeswalker he yeah. can go anywhere right what if he takes the players to a wrestling match where where the players have to tag in and stuff and wrestle a dragon. Well, oh, okay, so there must be three characters, right? So yeah. the Modron is a is NPC. Mm -hmm. um, the three characters can be different. Like he needs people to help him do this thing, but they they're not necessarily people who understand a lot about like like the the mythical world. So the one guy is just like a really good organized manager. He's just really organized. Are these? Oh, <laughs> we have to decide. Though. Are these guys are the players? The, the the people he's taking with them on this journey, or are they? I think that's a good, uh, yeah, yeah, that's who, a good who, quest. Yeah. I think yeah. it's, because I mean, a, if a player comes in, they mostly know their world and you're gonna yeah. give them stuff. So I think it'd be really funny to bring in normal, now, this is weird because it's so normal, one guy's just like an office manager at like a Starbucks. He's, he's, or he's just like, a, he's like a, he's a regional manager of a Starbucks. Okay, so that's one character. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay, I got like so, the so equivalent in the right. fantasy yes. realm. There's, yeah. there, there's the warlock paladin and Steve. Yeah, <laughs> I think it has to be So we Steve have three really players. Nice so this is a game for three players then, mm -hmm. yes? Yeah. Okay, three players and an, and an NPC who's they're going to adventure with. Yeah, but the and classes are not traditional cool. classes. Okay. They, you can you can just have like a normal office class. You can or you can be a warrior. But that, oh, I think yeah. that that actually fits because a lot of people don't know how to role play. <laughs> right, right. Uh, oh, if they're starting D and D. That's a really good, that's a really good <laughs> point though. If if you have a new player at a table for this game, you hand them Steve. Yes. <laughs> so it'll be kind of like offices and bosses, you know. If you listen to that, <laughs> it's one of my favorites right now. <laughs> But like one of the a wizard and Steve. Yeah, and then so the player who likes to fight, they can do all the fighting, and then the someone's gonna be a bard probably. So I mean, yeah, that's that's up to them. But I think it's kind of you can you can slot them in categories. So, right. uh, so I think the first arc you're mentioning would be um, the first bucket list item, and maybe mm. it would go through the like the three arcs with first bucket list item, second, second bucket, bucket list, list item, and then the and third. maybe the, maybe they're done with the bucket list and we have to deal with the consequences.
sense. That's true. Yeah, no, exactly. Actually, that's really cool. Absolutely. So we've got wrestling a dragon for the first. Right. <laughs> and they uh, have to take turns. That's the combat. That's right? true. It's also a social encounter. Yeah. And, and because you like Sailor Moon, what do you think? What if the planeswalker maybe always wanted to be a magic? Okay, so maybe <laughs> that's more of like a fetch quest. They've got to go find. Like, what if he? What if he grants them the player's mm. temporary oh. magical? Grants? Oh, okay. What if the well, players get to choose their own trans? What if they have to prove themselves worthy first? Because there always there has to be an arc. Because <laughs> the magic was in them all along. Hello. Steve, the magical girl. Okay, yes. so we, the, he so the, the planeswalker <laughs> wants to be a magical girl, yes. but they have to all go figure out how to become a magical girl to be right. a team. Because because the planeswalker knows he, he's worthy or she's worthy. Like mm -hmm. oh, they're, right. no, she's they're worthy. worthy. But 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 he doesn't know if the players are worthy. Right? Ah, <laughs> yeah. They have to earn their costumes and their wands. I like that. So they have to go to a place. <laughs> yeah, they have but to. But they undertake. have to prove to this planeswalker. Yeah. Undertake some kind of it'll, magical girl. It'll okay, be like the trials of I don't know, like Avatar or whatever, all those things, you know. <laughs> so this is like a skill check thing. So Absolutely. I, I, so the characters have to prove to the planeswalker. What are some of the ways? that somebody would be worthy well, to be a magical girl. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know about you, but one of the key identifiers of any magical girl, <laughs> right, is the uh, spinning dance they do to get mm -hmm. into uniform. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm thinking like a dex check, a performance check, something like mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe have the player stand up and do a, <laughs> uh, <that's laughs> do really a transformation yeah. sequence, yeah. right? And I think you can kind of go like um, Captain Planet with this, and each one of each of the three has their thing. So one's like heart, one's yeah. heart. Yeah, they get to choose their own one. But they board. have to yeah. express it. How would you express it in a different skill check kind of way? Oh, and and would and is there a way to incorporate their abilities mm -hmm. like? One of my favorite things is having them use their actions in combat yeah. for social things. So maybe doing certain moves, like fighting moves, in order to uh, to get to what they need. Right. So like, what if like you know how um, in in Sailor Moon or like any magical girl show, the attacks are very. Um, uh, uh, stylized, you know, sure, maybe yeah. someone shooting a big pink heart, right? You know, mm -hmm. so like, you know, you may have this very powerful wizard, but can this wizard uh, attack his enemy like a magical girl, right? Mm -hmm. And then so, you can attach that, right? Yeah. So you yeah. got the Captain Planet with the style, <laughs> yeah. right? right? So it's like, I'm heart, but this is how my attack would exactly. go. Exactly. <laughs> so if like, let's say the wizard just tries to throw a fireball, right? Yeah. Maybe it doesn't work so well. He throws like a fireball and it's mm -hmm. like, eh. And, the, and 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 maybe the plans are like no, that's not um, that's not magical girl enough. Try again. So he has to be like super pink first, heart. But beam. to get there, he has to channel into a memory from his past, oh, yeah. where he learned something really oh. important about him and his yeah. friends, him or her, his friends. Yeah. And then that makes that energy comes from within. Because yeah, it's love. Then, he has to feel it yeah. in his heart. And then the attack. Maybe they like just be at one really op attack that's like a level like eight or ten thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. they get one like kind of crazy one that. Yeah, they can only use every once every like two sessions. Okay, so that's gonna be like the first half of Act Two, but then they have to <laughs> once they prove their worth, uh -huh. then they have to go to this place and get that thing that'll turn them all into an actual magical girl. Sure, oh. yeah. So first they're worthy, so what then is they that? then they transform. Maybe yeah. that's more of a like a labyrinthine situation. A bit, or yeah. or they have to go find the, the ancient castle that was destroyed in the past that <laughs> how, how long is this um campaign that we're making how long do you want it to be it can be like six hours three hours I think for like four to six probably sure yeah. okay so like um yeah so it should it should pay off it should culminate in a big magical girl battle though because that's probably what they're mm -hmm. waiting for mm -hmm. after they get their costumes right and of course once they get into that big final you know maybe there's an army of demons maybe someone's trying to invade the earth mm -hmm. A lot of things happen in magical girl shows. Right? Oh, so this maybe is... it's, it's, it's so to make it like shorter, you can make that same, I guess, labyrinth they're in doing the initial thing. Um, when they get to kind of the end of it, so they don't have to go to a whole different place. Um, it's actually uh, what they're what they're really fighting and what they're really doing is fighting like a bad memory of the planeswalker from their past. So they're oh. helping them like emotionally come like. Like yeah. recover, and of course or... the planeswalker doesn't tell them that. Either. Yeah, they just at the end, it's like the shadow version of planeswalker. Right. Like the player's like, we were helping you with therapy. This kind, entire I'm kind time. of into that. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so the reward is they get the magical girl powers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can there be a crystal palace? I feel like there needs to be a crystal palace. Of course. Palace yeah. of course. Okay, yes. and then the item that transforms them into magical girl uh, is a. We could, there's oh there's so many. 
There's there's makeup compacts. There's wands. It should be weird though, right? Yeah, or it's, should... just, it's already weird enough. <laughs> it's already pretty weird. Well, it's also D and D, so it could also be like a you know like a uh, you can use like a cl- cleric focus or like a, it is... depends on the. There class. were those like like little pocket pe- girls, you know. Holly pocket. Holly pocket. Yeah. So maybe it's like a. Like something small. I don't know why I think I'm thinking small because like like a small just, puzzle box. Yeah, and so like the pieces of it break apart. Yeah. The little song plays. <laughs> that's Ooh, your I soundtrack, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. right? That's your soundtrack. So each member, <laughs> each of the four members, gets a piece of this, and together, if they're in a certain vicinity, then they become magical girl powers. Yeah, they do have to combine uh, their uh, <laughs> pieces and their friendship. Yes, that's and what right. they learned. One of, them, one of them has to throw a tiara. That's like baseline. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's like a little, each little piece has an opening and it's like, here's the ring of something mm-hmm. and yeah. here's a tiara of something. Yeah. But it's like really tiny and then they put it on and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's two. Act Two. Act Two, we're really, we're nailing What are this. the consequences? Act three is the consequences. consequences. Of magical girl powers. Well, we talked about maybe you know he has a bucket list, right? So he mm-hmm. went through one. He, maybe this is actually maybe this number is the end. It's like seven hundred and eighty-eight, seven hundred and ninety-nine, yeah. and like now he's done. Um, so now that he's done, what happens to the planeswalker? Like, can he? Can he die? Does he die? Does, well, does something bad happen? Well, when he is I was thinking satisfied? If, if this is like the end, right? If we're, we're nearing towards the end, like, because so far, you know, we have the wrestling thing. Technically, there was a big bad in the dragon that they have to wrestle and hit right. it with their signature move. Uh, the second, you know, the big bad is whatever the demons they're fighting, right? What if at the end, what if the, ooh, 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 what if? <laughs> I feel like I'm in <laughs> At the beginning, when you were setting up this plot and the planeswalker is taking them on this grand adventure, right? Mm-hmm. What if the entire reason they're on it is is to try to convince the planeswalker that there is more to life to enjoy? Because this guy, this jaded guy, right, maybe has experienced everything, right? Mm-hmm. And and he has this penultimate plan to maybe end the multiverse because Ooh. of his experiences, oh, right? Oh, because he's just done yeah. So you yeah. find that he is actually a bad guy? Well, he's not even a bad guy. He's just he's just done, right? Mm-hmm. He's experienced all there is to experience, and he's this close to making a judgment that, you know, maybe I should just Thanos, Thanos is all the way, right? Wow. So the players are like, hold on a second. Wait, wait. You said you have bucket list stuff to do, right? Let's, take, let's show you a great time, mm-hmm. and maybe you won't destroy the multiverse. Yeah, so okay. that would be like storytelling and more improv on the player's part yeah. to decide what maybe their character thinks is really cool to do yeah. or maybe what's on their character's bucket list item. Yeah. To, like, or bucket list that to like, way, do. It gives them motivation to not just like, all right, I guess I'm in this story now where I'm on this adventure. Like, well, I don't want the world to end, so I guess, yeah, we'll try real hard to show this guy a real good time. So, you know, you know we are all familiar with murder hobos. Yes. <laughs> so how do you convince players not to murder Hobo out of this situation? Because I can smell that a mile away. Because mm-hmm. they're like, you were great, but we have magical powers. So we're going to take you out because we are playing D&D. Well, if they, I, I imagine if they try to attack the Planeswalker, a Planeswalker of that age and power probably is like pretty well beyond just an eight level eight player rolling an attack on him, yeah. you know? And these are level six. Oh, I'm sorry, level so, six. Player. Level six is pretty beefy, you yeah, know? Yeah, pretty beefy. So how, um, that's enough, <laughs> that's high enough level to be cocky and be like, no, we I, can take you see, out. See, that's the reason I, I wanted to include something like a, a like a wrestling match at the beginning because, you know, a lot of players just want to roll the dice and see a big number and have mm-hmm. a cool thing happen, right? And that's why you have that player go and wrestle the, the red dragon, right? And you go, all right, go get your murder hobo thing out. Hit your finisher off the top rope, roll for it, and then pin the dragon. <laughs> and there's the murder hobo's big, like, you know, big yeah. payoff. Um, and I feel like as long as you satiate, uh, every player goes into a game of D&D mm-hmm. wanting something out of it, right? right. For moto- murder hobos, it's big numbers mm-hmm. and result. Mm-hmm. I feel like as long as you give them that, you know, in some fun way, they're, they're, they're much more likely to play along with the rest of the... I okay. think a, a trick you could do though is that if they start to, you know, try to activate their powers to fight this uh, planeswalker, planeswalker, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> where are we now? Um, maybe it's like they can't because they've all made a team and they can't like summon their power without all of them doing it, including the, the planeswalker. He's part oh, of. Oh, that's he or really part of this cool. Now, yeah, they're all in this together. Really? So true. maybe. Oh, I got it. Hmm. If they try to attack, then 
they feel it. They get hurt too. Yeah. They're all connected. Ooh, yeah. that's like, dirty. I like it. They know well, the minute that happens, they try to attack and they get injured. They're like, oh, we actually shouldn't do this. We should try to think outside the box. And then they'll pr- probably eventually get to the right. place of talking it out. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and also, we could have this cool, fun thing at the end. Like, let's say the roles don't go very well throughout the one shot, mm-hmm. right? Maybe they mess up their their um, <laughs> mic spot in, in the wrestling ring, or maybe um, <laughs> uh, maybe the evil Sailor Scouts win. I don't know, <laughs> right? Um, what if the, uh, they, they're unable to change the Planeswalker's mind at the very end? W- that's kind of like a hidden boss encounter uh, opportunity. Oh, yeah. Right? Because at the very end, you think you're, you're, you, the Planeswalker is going to uh, go ahead and make everything right. But then um, he's like, no, you, you, it didn't really turn out the way I thought, you know? Yeah. I'm disappointed in you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, stop me if this is too weird. Because <laughs> no. I, like, I like games that get really weird. Yeah. Right? Since the Planeswalker is from the Magic the Gathering mm-hmm. kind of universe, what if at the very end of the game, if you can't convince the Planeswalker to not go through with this plan, uh-huh. every player at the table has to be provided a Magic the Gathering deck and you have to play a free for multiplayer Magic the Gathering game and beat the Planeswalker. <laughs> like be- beating death at chess. It's yeah, similar. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's really cool. See, that's how my that. table plays stuff, but I, it might be too weird for some no, people. No, but... that's pretty cool. So I, I don't play Magic the mm-hmm. Gathering, but that would be a really fun way to learn. But I really like taking an element and like of another game mm-hmm. and bringing it into your yeah. game. Yeah. I like it. That's cool. I think this is an amazing <laughs> adventure. Thank you guys so much. No Play to be there. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're going to we have skills. one last thing to do. We got to name it. Oh, oh man. I haven't thought that Goodness far gracious. Yet. Should it be something about the bucket list, but not that because that isn't working for the movie? Oh yeah, we can't we can't get away with just calling it the bucket list, can I'm we? I'm fairly certain we cannot. No. All right. Uh, the planes list. The pla- <laughs> This is the hardest part uh, of a game. Get God's to do list <laughs> number seven nine nine. <laughs> um. Let's see. So. Oh, wow, this is the hardest yeah. part. I think I really, I we'll go back to the elements. It. There's a bucket list. Uh-huh. There's um, appeasing this this person, helping this person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's um, convincing them to be a part of the group. There's magical girl powers. There's cooperation. There's con- also. I like the numbers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I kind of like the <laughs> bucket list number yeah. 738 and 739 or something. Sure. Yeah, just just pick a number. It could be any number. Um, yeah, maybe his. Maybe he only has, he has 739 things on his list. This is 738 and 739. What is his name? Um, their name. What is their name? Yeah. Could be a non-gendered name. planeswalker. Could be... I always, I always fall back on like really like easy names like Terry. Like, cool. <laughs> Terry. Terry's list number. Terry's list. Terry's list. Terry's, Terry's list. Terry's list. And then you could alternately play um, his voice like that from <laughs> Terry from uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I'm gonna admit something. When I, d- when I DM games and I have like NPCs I know that won't be coming back after a scene, they're always either Steve or Terry. Really? Oh. Every <laughs> single one. Every single like one. Is Steve or Terry. Well, yeah. <laughs> thank you guys so much for creating Terry's List. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nailed it. Uh, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you on the internet? Sure. Uh, you can find me at uh, you can find me at I am Chubby Bunny. Everyone on the internet. That's Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. And I also do a weekly podcast called Senpai Buddies, which releases every Thursday. It's a comedy uh, news podcast about Asian pop culture. And also Betty and Rock Queens every Wednesday on Hyper RPG. Awesome. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at, at KG Tang, and I think that's pretty much the only place on the social medias I hang out. <laughs> so yes, please find me there. And I'm Satine Phoenix, owner of Gilding Light and the Dungeon Master of The Sirens. Thank you guys for watching the Storyteller's Guide. Before we go, I want to give a huge thank you to our partner, Idle Champions. Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms is a strategy management video game that brings together iconic Dungeons and Dragons characters from novels, adventures, and popular shows onto one epic adventure. The game is available now on PC, Mac, Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, iPad, and on all Android devices. Also, thank you to our sponsor, World Anvil. 
World Anvil is a world-building tool for authors, storytellers, and world-building lovers. It's an online set of tools specifically designed for world-building. It'll allow you to organize your world, search through everything and anything with ease, present it publicly, and get feedback from a community of world-builders around the globe. That's worldanvil.com. We hope you guys enjoyed the Storyteller's Guide. If you have weird ideas for your games, go ahead and hit us up on uh, Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook, at Idle Champions, and at Gilding Light. Until we meet again, dear Storytellers. Thanks again for watching the Storyteller's Guide here on Gilding Light. If you like what we're doing here, go ahead and click the subscribe button and follow us on at Gilding Light on all the socials. Want to hang out with me on Idle Champions? Go to idlechampions.com slash storyteller. Until next time, play, dream, and tell all the stories.